Hi, welcome to the MIDI Engine Meta Sounds um, plugin tutorial. MIDI Engine Meta Sounds allows you to play MIDI files using uh, Meta Sounds. And um, the top features within it that I'd like to highlight is that it imports MIDI files, it broadcasts them, and then it plays MIDI events. So to learn about the broadcasting part, you can watch the tutorials for MIDI Engine broadcasters. Uh, MIDI Engine Meta Sounds includes both MIDI Engine Broadcasters functionality and uh, MIDI Engine Core functionality. So once you have MIDI Engine Meta Sounds installed, you'll find this um, content folder. And most of the assets in here, they are example um, assets. So I'm going to explain how to create a MIDI player. So if you open this, um, BP MIDI player actor, you find that it has this MIDI player component. So that's what you need to do. That's the only thing you need to do to create a MIDI player. Basically, that's the only component you need to add to an actor to have a MIDI player in the world. So the MIDI player has these two options. If you look under MIDI engine, there's a section for MIDI player, which mostly has to do with broadcasting and functionality right here. Um, if you want to know about playheads and everything, um, just watch the tutorials for MIDI Engine Broadcasters. But I'm going to focus on the virtual instruments because this is what this plugin is mostly about. And um, after you import your um, MIDI file right here, you, you'll notice that your MIDI file has tracks, right? It has the piano track, the kick track, the snare track, and the hi-hat track or what have you. Right. So in our uh, virtual instruments map, we map our tracks. All right. So you see this name piano, it matches this. So we are basically mapping our tracks, right, to an actual, um, let's say, uh, a virtual instrument. The thing that we're playing things with meta sounds. I'll show you how to create this. But as you can see, I've written piano and then I click the drop down. I select my virtual instrument. Um, object or class it's actually a class here okay so that's that's the settings that you need to do uh with midi player so i'm gonna focus now on creating uh, virtual instruments how virtual instruments work and how you can add your own here maybe you can add like a guitar virtual instrument going back to the meta sounds content folder you'll find that there's this um, virtual instruments folder uh, I'm going to make a demonstration using the piano, which, um, piano, um, virtual instrument. And if I open this up, you will see that there's a section here for MIDI engine. The first option is for you to select the meta sound. Um, nine times out of 10, you want to select this, uh, meta sound sampler with ADSR. So this meta sound is found in this folder right here. And going back, the second option is the sample mappings. Okay. So inside our virtual instrument, the grand piano virtual instrument, we have the sounds folder. And the sounds folder is basically just um, samples. You see, we have a C4 sample, C5 sample, and a C6 sample. I'm going to play this, uh, and uh, we won't, this might be loud, but. You can hear that there's nothing more to it. It's just like a single note playing and then it goes silent. So there are basically samples. So if we come back to our blueprint here, you can see that we are ref referencing these samples uh, under the sample mappings. So to add a sample mappings, you just do add and then you select sample mapping and then it'll give you the options to do what I'm about to explain right here. So here's the first, I'm going to minimize these two. Here's the first sample mapping. And at sample, it uses a sample C4 that I've just played. And you can see it has the section that says notes range. And it says the note range that the sample will cover. So basically the C4 uh, sample will be used for all notes from zero until 48. Remember that for MIDI, notes go from zero all the way up to 128. So I'm telling the system that um, for all the notes from 0 to 48, use the sample. So since the sample is C4, 
um, if you want to make it maybe say D5 or something, the system will pitch it down or up, all right? So this is what the section is saying. It's saying for all the notes here, pitch this um, sample up or down as you need, right? And then we are saying um, from note 49 to 72, we want to switch the sample to the note um, C5. The, the reason we're doing this is because if we keep pitching this uh, too far, it will start to sound funny. It will still work, but it will sound funny. So basically the goal with this um, sample map is that if you want to increase the quality, like the audio quality of your virtual instrument, um, how rich it sounds is you add more, sam add more samples, right? But the more samples you add, the more resources you use and um, the more samples you need to create. But I found that maybe using three, four, five um, samples works fine. As you can see here, I'm using um, three samples, one, two, and uh, the second sample is mapped for node 49 to 72. And the third sample for node 73 to 128, which is the last node in, uh, in the MIDI engine, I mean, in the MIDI file uh, or the MIDI events um, spectrum. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about um, creating these things. So now I'm gonna play, um, because as you can see, our MIDI MIDI um, player object, where is it? So blueprints right here. Our MIDI player object on begin play, it just plays a MIDI asset that we've selected here. And remember that we've mapped, we've told the system that if it's a piano, play notes from this uh, virtual instrument. If it's a kick, use this virtual instrument, which is a kick. So all these virtual instruments that are set up more or less the same way, they just use different samples. So I'm gonna hit play. Um, this might be loud, but here we go. Okay, if you're wondering how accurate that is, here's the original sample, um, the original MIDI file right here within my favorite door um, to FL Studio. Okay, you can hear that it's same tempo, same speed, give or take the same sound because we are using different instruments since FL Studio has its own virtual instruments or samples here and um, this has its own. But um, yeah, that's it. Uh, one option that I've left that might interest you is your virtual instrument has these settings. It has the ADSR settings and the mixer settings, right? So as a virtual instrument, you have the volume and the pan settings. This volume and pan settings are the same as these two, right? You can control the volume of this virtual instrument right here and the pan here. So that's what these two mean. And then the ADSR is for attack, decay, sustain. These um, are similar to um, this section right here, the envelope. If you're gonna use the envelope with the delay attack, sustain and what have you. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. If you have uh, any questions, you can maybe take a look at the documentation and uh, join the Discord server and ask any questions that you have, and I'll be there to uh, to answer them. Thanks.